Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast. It's now time for Today in History, and we're going back to the year 1988. It was this day in history, February uh, 18th, 1988, that the federal government established the Federal Road Safety Corps in Nigeria. And uh, basically, members of the commission have the power to arrest and prosecute persons who were reasonably suspected of having committed any traffic offense, right? The federal government, the Federal Road Safety Corps is a government agency with the responsibility to ensure road safety administration in Nigeria. It operates in all states of the country, as well as the federal capital territory, and is the leading agency in Nigeria on road safety administration and management. Some of their key functions include making the highways safe for motorists and other road users, to check roadworthiness of vehicles, to recommend works and infrastructure to you know, prevent accidents on the highways, to educate motorists and members of the public on the importance of road discipline when using the highways. Now, before the Road Safety Commission was established, there was no concrete uh, policy action to address you know, issues on Nigerian roads. And it was the first deliberate policy on road safety uh, created in 1974 of the National Road Safety Commission by the then military government. And then eventually that was disbanded and uh, the Road Safety, uh, Federal Road Safety Corps was established in 1980. Eight. But basically, they, they try to do a good job in ensuring that people obey traffic laws and accidents are minimized on our roads. And uh, we eventually got into a you know conversation you know not long ago about uh, arming road safety officials uh, because they of course claimed that they were you know facing a lot of um, dangerous uh, road users and they needed to carry to bear arms. Mm. Um, still, is something that comes up every now and then. Um, of course, Nigerians always kick against it. All right, I'm moving to 2013, and this is talking about a diamond heist. Uh, this happened in uh, Brussels at the airport, where about $50 million worth of diamonds was stolen from an airplane. It says that eight masked gunmen in two cars with the police markings stole $50 million worth of diamonds from the plane. It was, um, of course, heading to uh, Switzerland. It was a Fokker 100 plane operated by Helvetic Airways uh, right on the apron of uh, the Brussels airport in Belgium. And it says that the whole of this heist was completed without any shot being fired, without anyone being hurt. It, all it took all about 20 minutes for all of this to happen. They, uh, these robbers basically hid in a construction site uh, right next to the airport and, um, and got into, of course, the runway through a hole that they had created in the wall. Um, approached the uh, airplane with their two vehicles, a Mercedes and an Audi. Both of them were black. Of course, they had police lights on the, on the two vehicles, so they looked like they were police officers. They were dressed as police officers. They drove straight to the airplane where the um, diamonds were being transported from one place to the other and uh, stopped the plane, stopped the pilot, stopped the staff there, and then loaded all of them into their vehicles and left, all in 20 minutes. The passengers on the plane didn't even know that there was a robbery going on till after the robbery was completed, and then they were asked to disembark um, the plane. Um, of course, these guys all got away, but later on, about 30 people were arrested. Um, 18 of them, I think, were um, eventually um, sent you know, home because they weren't found guilty or anything. And then the other 19 were held for further investigation. A, uh, what was the man's name? There's a man, um, I'm trying to find his name now. Yes, yeah, so a man called Pascal Pont. He was a Swiss real estate agent. Was eventually found uh, to be very to be culpable in this robbery. Um, he was the one who uh, was given a sack of diamonds, and then uh, he at some point was also trying to store some of these things in in um, in some other country in Cyprus, I believe. Uh -huh. um, investigations continued, and and, and uh, of course uh, his uh, phone conversations, his interactions with one of the people who was also um, guilty of the robbery, um, you know, put uh, them all of them together, and then he was the one sentenced to jail for five years, sometime in twenty. 19. Wow, yes. incredible. Um, um, but it was it was a it was a pretty um, smooth mm. you know robbery, um, and and I, th I think the mistakes that they made really were 
after the robbery had happened. The police then had said that it was one of the most properly planned robberies that they had ever yeah, seen. Yeah, well executed. Um, 20 properly minutes. executed. But the, the challenge that they had was after the robbery, uh, trying to sell off these diamonds, trying to you know store them in different countries. Mm -hmm. And that's where they started to make mistakes. But $50 million worth of diamonds, yes. that is a lot. I mean, there's no way you'd have been able to move all that without attracting attention. It was well, it what, it they, they so probably much. didn't you know, you know? Um, plan after the robbery, you know, well enough. But some other thing that I, I read, if you look at the Wikipedia story from this, is after they loaded these bags into their vehicles and mm -hmm. drove off, some of the diamonds fell. And so that, for me, was the part that concerns yeah. me because I'm thinking that if I was a staff at the airport... You would have stolen it. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll return it to the police. Really? Oh, Saogi, I really <laughs> doubt that. But anyway, let's now turn to factual issues now. It's uh, the big story here in Nigeria. It's security, the Kagara abduction of about 20, over 20 uh, schoolboys in Niger State. We're discussing with a public affairs expert after this break. <laughs> 